The LEGO Movie 2 video game is quite simply a massive failure on all fronts. It fails at being a fun LEGO game. It fails at being a good open world game. It fails at being a good tie-in game for a movie. And it fails at making me want to make a video about my experience with it. Welcome to completion number 96 of the Potato Backlog Project. This one's going to be brief because I want to continue to be a YouTuber. But the LEGO Movie 2 game has me seriously questioning my life choices, what I do with my free time, and this this entire backlog project. So stick around to the end of the video for the who gives a damn about this game, Tater Raider. <laughs> Actually, you know what? Let's just rate it right now. That way you don't have to keep watching if you don't want to. One happy potato face out of five. And I guess I'll tell you why if you want. The only reason I'm not giving this game the super rare, most dreaded five potato asses out of five is that it works. In the most literal sense of that word, it works. You can turn this game on, play it, and finish it. It didn't freeze and was surprisingly free of glitches and bugs. Hats off, Traveler's Tales. The polish made all the difference in your Tater Raider score. Go tell your friends. Emmett doesn't even talk in this game. Isn't that super weird? He talks in the movie. I'm pretty sure I remember that. But in this game, it's mostly Lucy and then some NPCs say some stuff as well. The game summed up in one sentence. You hit a button to bring out your building blueprints, then you hit another button to place the thing it builds, rinse and repeat. The game doesn't challenge you at all, it doesn't turn on your imagination. I know it has elements from LEGO Worlds, but I don't want to play LEGO Worlds. If I'd wanted to play LEGO Worlds, that's the game I would have played. The LEGO games had come so far up to this point just to throw it all away, and I can totally see why there was a three year gap between this game and the Star Wars Skywalker Saga game that released in 2022. This is a bland, boring world where exploring will find you these chests. You break them open to get relics, which hold items, which are random unlocks. Yeah, random. You can get doubles of items and character skins that you find. The doubles turn into studs, which don't really do much at all. It feels like these were meant to be microtransactions, surprise pack loot boxes you pay extra money for, which is just gross. Oh, and those characters you find are basically just skins, not characters. There are no character unique abilities abilities in this Lego game. Batman doesn't get gadgets. Lucy doesn't jump any higher. Emmett doesn't do whatever Emmett did in the other games. The abilities are regulated to items that are then shared between all characters. So all characters essentially are the exact same character. The game only makes you switch characters when you have to talk to certain NPCs to further the storyline, which just feels so stupid in a Lego game, where one of the core mechanics was to unlock new characters so you could get that ability to access other parts of the game. They're just like, nah, we're done with that now. The other collectible are these purple blocks, kind of replacing gold bricks, I guess. Most of them just show up on the map, so they're really easy to find. It's like zero challenge or fun to be had there. And that's it. You go through some very boring worlds loosely based around the movie until you hit the end. I don't want to talk about this game anymore. <laughs> Thank you for watching. I'm sorry this video wasn't better. I didn't even actively hate this game. When I really don't like something, I put a lot more effort into telling you guys about it. So from that point of view, even this video is a failure. So we're on to the next one, I guess. I promise it'll be a better video. This game has just depressed me about playing video games.